So, hey everyone, it's Emma back from the Marketing Success Summit, and today I am delighted to introduce to you Chris Wright from the UK. So, welcome, Chris. Hey, Emma, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. And yourself? I'm fantastic, thank you. Good stuff. Well, I'm delighted to have you here, Chris. And actually, Chris interviewed me last week for his podcast, so it's great to kind of like role reversal here today. <laughs> um, but essentially, Chris is going to share with us his exciting story over the last couple of years and what he's been doing. And Chris has been mainly based so far in the uh, fitness industry and working as a personal trainer. And I guess it's one of those industries uh, we were just chatting about whereby you know, you can only, there's the idea that you can only earn so much in that you can only meet one client, at, you know, at different times of the day and it kind of restricts um, your income um, or so we are led to believe. So Chris is going to show us today how um, you, with coaching, with fitness coaching and indeed with other businesses where there is that one-to-one -one time and how you can up level or scale your business, even though the idea is typically, or the traditional idea in some of these businesses are that you can't actually scale your business. So he's going to, going to show us some tips um, today and share some secrets of what he's done and how he's transitioned from, you know, kind of a lower income, if you will, into a higher income by applying these principles. So I'm really excited to hear what you've done, Chris. Um, you know, and can you give us a little bit of background yourself in terms of just yourself and your story and just kind of how you got started just before we kick off? Yeah, of course. I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into the story when we kind of get into it because it's okay. kind of it'll share the journey with you. But I can give you a quick brief thing. Um, the kind of I guess for a coach's point of view, a personal trainer, um, and this goes for the same for I imagine for like hairdressers, beauty therapists, everyone. Often they're like renting space, mm -hmm. right? and when you get qualified, or when you go through your qualifications, your certifications, they're great at making you a good. I'm not even gonna say great, a good personal trainer. Right, and you come out with the skills of, hey, you can go teach someone how to be healthy, or you can go coach this person, or whatever. But not once do they cover the skills of business. Mm -hmm. And I think like the average lifespan of a PT, a personal trainer in the industry, is like a year and a half, something like that. Wow. Because they, they, yeah, it's ridiculous because they go into the gym, they're paying five hundred pound a month rent to the gyms in London. It's like a thousand pound a month, depending on where you're at, and that's before you've picked up a client. Yeah. and then it's just like hope and pray that you get clients that's kind of the strategy that most personal trainers most coaches use and you know within a year they're like i can't afford to do this anymore i'm not making any money and they go into another industry and they're gone and you know and i got to that point of am i going to throw this all in or am i going to be serious about this and kind of figure this out i luckily went with the i'm serious about this and figured it all out kind of approach and um yeah well i'm going to share that story with you with you today and how i went from a standalone PT to having an amazing team who and a studio and amazing clients who just absolutely rock the show and I don't even have to be there I can be here chatting to you Emma. Sounds great well I'm looking forward to your presentation and then you're going to share all these tips with us so um, if you want to share your screen that would be great. Perfect let's dive into this so let me share let me know when you can see the screen. I can see it now so it's perfect. Perfect so that oh got a bit aggressive there that should be full view. Can you see the full screen? I can indeed. Awesome. Okay, cool. So, shall I just dive into it, Emma? Do you want to kind of... No, I think you, off you go. And I mean, if there might be various points, I might just pop in and just ask a question or two. And if you don't... Perfect. Want... Yeah, you throw questions at me as much as you want. That's no problem. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> um, awesome. So, basically, what I'd like to do today is share, share... I'm going to share my story, but throughout that story, I'm going to share lessons and teachings and things that I think people can get a lot of value out of. So, I know there's a lot of personal trainers, if they're listening to this, will be able to relate to this. Uh, I once sat down and worked out while I was working in a gym on my own, how many hours I was in the gym, how many hours I was coaching clients, how many hours I was writing up programs, how many hours I was doing quote unquote marketing or what I thought was marketing, everything to do with the business. And I was like, based on everything that I'm doing, I'm making a solid £1.63 an hour. And I was like, that is not fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> on any level, that absolutely sucks. And yes, I might have said, right, well, I charged 30 quid or whatever it was for a personal training session. But by the time I've taken that one client through the personal training session, I've given 50% of that back to the gym. And then I'll spend five hours doing other bits and pieces around that. I'm like, this is, this is completely null and void. This is ridiculous. And so what I'm going to share with you today is how I went from that place of realizing that I'm making 163 an hour to a business making 247,000 a year 
and how anyone listening could do exactly the same. Now, I know that there are uh, businesses out there making way more than a quarter of a million every year. I, I get that. So I'm not even trying. This is not a, hey, look how cool I am. This is a, look, there are people out there in the coaching industry who are the average, the average salary of the personal trainer is in their first three years is £14,000 a year. Now, if you're in London, that can just about get you a parking space. Like, <laughs> like that can't, like that can't, you can't do anything with that. Like that's not, that's not a livable uh, salary. And all this I want to show is actually that, that 247,000, that's through coaching alone, personal training. That's no, that's not including products. That's not including online programs. That is coaching. Like, um, and I'll go through the, the kind of the, the house of that. So anyone thinking, I can't even make more than the average PT. Like, yeah, that's a mind. That's what I call head trash. But we're going to throw in a new uh, hashtag here. Hashtag head trash. Uh, when people put those barriers up, um, that's head trash. We're just telling ourselves stories, and, and actually, it's totally possible. We just don't know how. And what I'm going to do today is share the how that you everyone can go out and do that. Okay. okay. So let's let's dive into it. So there are going to be. Throughout this presentation, my goal is for people to be able to get to the end of this and be like, I've got it. I know exactly, I know exactly what's happening. I know how to do it. I know how I can take my business to the next level and I am ready to go. That's my goal. And if people can go, yeah, I've got whatever it is out of this one, two, three things, takeaways, then I am super pumped. And I'd love to hear from anyone who goes through this about how they're implementing and what they're doing. And Emma, I think you'll give people the way to get in contact with me later on. That's fine. Um, but I would love to know how people are doing and implementing this stuff. So uh, I'm going to go back one there. Just get focused. This is what I want people to do. Anyone watching this right now, I'm sure you tell them this in all of the, all of the lessons. Put away the iPhones, put away Facebook. Just I want your attention here. Um, I'm a bit needy, Emma, you see. I just like people to, to focus <laughs> on me for a minute and, and really get clear on and get a pen and paper out and start like doodling, take notes throughout this because there's going to be so many lessons from this. So who is Chris Wright? Uh, loads of people. This is Who is this ugly mug on this, uh, on this picture right here? Who is Chris Wright? What, whatever I come from, what do I do? So just real, real quickly, let me dive into this. So as I told you, I was a struggling personal trainer and I, and I say struggling like it was, it's horrible. Like when I can only describe it as like, I, I'm quote unquote setting up my own uh, business and loads of my friends are like, yeah, that's great. You're so brave. It's so courageous. Blah, blah, blah. blah. And they're going and working in London, at London and straight out of university earning 40 K a year, you know, 30, 30 to 40 K a year. And I'm there going, yeah, I thought I'd made the right decision. And yet you guys seem to be having a much better time of this. <laughs> like I was like, not sure I've made the right decision and just kind of the invite like I just it wasn't good for me I was like I don't like this like I'm not, I don't understand why I'm struggling I've worked I know I work harder than any one of those guys that goes up into town like they work from nine till six on a Friday they stop at 1 p.m so they can go to the pub for seven beers in the afternoon and I'm here and it's 10 p.m on a Friday night and I'm still at the gym and I'm like what this isn't right like I'm this isn't this doesn't make sense to me um, I'm happy with the like the hustle as it were, and, and working my backside off to grow a business, but actually I was doing that and wasn't seeing any return. You know, I was working 60 hours a week easily, easily. People would tell you that I just don't ever stop working. I'm just constantly in that mindset, but I think that's just the entrepreneur mindset. And, and that's when I sat down one day and just went, okay, I'm actually going to work out how much I'm earning. Uh, Cause it's all good and well saying, yeah, you get 30 pounds an hour, but you don't get 30 pounds an hour. You get 30 pounds an hour when you're coaching a client. Uh, and then there's so much more that goes into the back of that. And then I went, you know what? It took me way too long to figure this out, by the way, Emma. It took me way too long to figure this out. But it, I was like, I've had enough of struggling. And I think we all hit that point at some point, you, whether, whatever it is. It might be in our health when you hear people that they've just had a heart attack and suddenly they decide, oh, maybe I should lose that extra 15 stone that I'm carrying or whatever it is. Um, that, that, when you hit that point of, I'm fed up. I've had enough. Like, I'm done. And, and that was it. And I was like, right, what do I need to do to actually change this? Um, I enjoyed health and fitness. And I was like, I don't want to leave this industry to go work in an office. I'm not good at working in an office. I need to be up and about and talking to people and chatting. So I was like, right, there are some skills I need to learn here. There are some skills that I wasn't taught in the, my certification process. And that was marketing and sales. And the moment I realized that is 
when the whole business started to change. And I really kind of went, wow, this is, it, it, it doesn't matter how many PT courses, how many kettlebell courses, how many massage courses, whatever you do. It, like, and that's how courses, like there'll be people listening to this going, courses sell you on the fact of if you have this qualification and like, Emma, I even went and started a master's course, master's degree in strength and conditioning because I thought if I have MSC after my name, it will probably mean I'll get more clients. What it a load. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. <laughs> what a load of BS. <laughs> and by the time I realized that, I was halfway through my master's course and I actually stopped it. I was like, nope, like, I've got all the theory that I wanted out of it. I've got the, uh, the application process. And they were like, yeah, it's going to take another, I think, eight months to a year to finish your research to actually get the MSc. And I'm like, I don't have a year to put into, uh, now that I've understood that actually marketing is what I need, marketing and sales, I don't have a year to go do that. Mm -hmm. And so I made the decision that time, go, look, thank you. It's been brilliant. The con the, the not, it made me a better trainer for sure. hundred percent without a doubt, but it didn't mean I was going to get more clients. And at that point, I decision of, nope, this isn't what I want to do for the next year. See you later. Off you go. Left my money on the table and just went, I was like, no, don't need to do this. Um, and there was a point where I was, uh, sat when I made this decision to go learn business, I was sat at home and I was just like, I need to go do something like serious about this. I had no money in the, my account. My account was like minor. Like if you had taken the minus number, the minus bit off my account, it would have looked brilliant. Um, <laughs> and I sat there and went, I need to do something. So I just went online and I started Googling like marketing for fitness businesses and Google like growing my business, marketing for business, small businesses, everything. And in that moment, I made a decision to invest in myself. And I basically went and got a credit card that I couldn't afford, uh, bought a flight to Orlando to go to an event uh, with business owners from all over the world. And I told myself at that event, look, I've scrimped and saved to get here. I'm not going to buy anything. Well, I got there and bought freaking everything. Uh, <laughs> I drank the Kool-Aid as it were and absolutely dived head first into business. And this was all on a credit card again. that I just couldn't, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to pay this back, but I'm going to pay it back within whatever. I just set myself a day and went, I'm going to do this. And just as a matter of interest, what was the course that you went to do? So it was just like, it wasn't even a course, Emma. It was just like, and it was like a three day event of like right. speakers, different uh, marketing and business. It wasn't even like, specific like fitness speakers it was just like um people from like the business world like dan kennedy there okay. was like, um it was just di different speakers from all over the place um and it was great and i was sat there going this is what i've been missing this is the key and then there was like random courses that were selling and i just bought everything i was like yeah here's my card, here's my card, here's my card. you know that point where you're like praying that the card goes through and they're like yeah that's gone through and you're like it's, it's worked i don't even know how that's happened um and basically I'd made back to, I think it came out at about, um, it was like a five grand investment or something like that total all in. And I was like, that feel, at the time I was like, that feels like a ton of money. I was like, that is a lot of money. And when I implemented the systems, I'd made that back within five weeks. And I was just like, Ooh, this works. I was like, bear in mind that was like three weeks of studying and two weeks of implementation. I was like, okay, I'm excited. I'm now understanding that marketing and sales is where I need to be. Mm -hmm. And I then with the next year went from making it was, yeah, whatever, 163 an hour, whatever it was. I think it was like 10 grand a year. It was nothing. And I went from that to making 70 grand in the next year. And after that, the year after we made 150,000, the year after that we made quarter of a million, 250,000 and I'm not needed in the business. And that's, yeah. I, I look at it and go, like I've done that. Wow. Okay, cool. Awesome. That's amazing. And it's, and I, and I, someone had a go at me once they were like, Chris, but there's a difference between profit and revenue. And I'm like, absolutely hundred percent. There is now I've got a studio, I've got a team staff. Um, they're amazing, but it's allowing me to live kind of not, not my dream lifestyle yet, but it's allowing me to live a much better lifestyle than I was living before, uh, without a doubt. And you know, the freedom that this now allows me to have in terms of, as I said, the team are there now, Emma, cranking away with sessions and I get to sit here and chat to you. That to me is that I'm loving it. That, that's where I get enjoyment out of. And also for anyone who's thinking I can't make more than 15 grand being a personal trainer, that 250,000 comes entirely from coaching. Entirely from coaching. 
one-on-one -on -one or we do something called semi-private where we have four clients with one trainer mm -hmm. um entirely from coaching that's you know and that's three coaches right three coaches and you could probably even say we don't even need the three we could get away with two and a half of them but i like having three um like it's for anyone thinking i can't make a decent living as a personal trainer you i can now say because i've been there saying that i was wrong and that person who's saying that is wrong you can make a serious amount of uh money if you want to in the fitness world for sure fantastic that's great and i think it's great to see um and over here i think as well there's lessons that apply to the, the lot of parents listening in so they don't you know they want to, uh, you don't have to be a parent you can be anybody you want to have the freedom to not be stuck um, to our premises are stuck to something so that you have the freedom to do what, like to enjoy your life as well as work and as well as earn money um i think like you found that balance which is amazing 100 i think i don't think it's ever a people because people go well why don't you just stop now chris and i'm like i've got different goals i've got things that i'm moving on to i've got things that excite me and more challenges so i don't think like I'm not going to sit there and be like, right, I'm, I'm there. I've done it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, that's great. This is now allowing me to do other things that I wanted to do. And I think the key thing for me when I'm, when I'm working with people, helping them grow their businesses is what do you want from life? Mm -hmm. Because that's all the business is there to help you do. Yeah. Right. The business is just the vehicle to helping you achieve whatever you want in life. And I think people get stuck being like, I've got to do this for my business. Like I, I speak to people. I'm there like, yeah, I want to have five studios. And I'm like, why? And they're like, I don't know. Seems like a good idea. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and when, they, when we break it down, I'm like, okay, what do you actually want from life? And they're like, I want to earn four grand a month. I'm like, you don't need five studios to earn four grand a month. You can do that without one studio if you really want to. Like, it's, it's not an issue. And I'm like, if, if, what, if you're kind of quote unquote dream lifestyle, then you're, you build this business, it's five studios big. And that takes away from everything from your dream lifestyle, like time with your family, time with your kids. You're going to freaking hate your business mm -hmm. right? yeah, and you're, sure. going to, you're going to hate it because it's putting away from everything. So I would always say, right, focus on what you want and then build the business to help you get there. If that makes sense. Great advice. Absolutely sterling advice. For sure. Oh, so, and I mean, from there, now what I do is I coach business owners all over the world. Um, I've worked with people in Australia, the UK, France, Spain, America, like all over the States, Canada, and a lot within fitness businesses, health businesses, but you know, work with people in the wine industry. That's two completely polar opposite industries, isn't it? Like, well, it depends. <laughs> red wine is healthy, right? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, just kind of whether it's online businesses, offline, and the, the principles of business are the principles of business. Correct. And I think a lot of people go, "This won't work for me." There's people now listening, Emma, that will go, "This won't work for me. I'm not in the coaching industry." Yeah, for sure. Right. And this is where people need to take the lessons learned by people that have done it already and simply, like Chris is saying, apply it, learn it and apply it. Um, and it's one of the things I really want people to do on this summit is not just come and listen, to actually take action, for sure. 100%. And, and if you are sat there listening and thinking, this won't work for my business, you are wrong. Like if you take these principles and apply them, you'll see growth in your business so you just got to ask the question how mm -hmm. how yeah. can i apply this to my business i'm talking to fitness professionals i want you to ask the question how sure. i'm going to move on i've had enough of who is chris right <laughs> so over the years i did a lot of things right i'm pleased to say um it clearly it worked however i also did a load of things wrong <laughs> i kind of um i did a kind of a, yes i got coaching and mentoring but there was loads and loads and loads of mistakes within there. And I think I just want to a make it tell people, give them permission to make mistakes. Cause I think there's a lot of the time that people are so scared to even step out and make a mistake that they don't step out at all. So I have so many things wrong. Like I make mistakes every day. Even now I'm making mistakes every day. My team call me up on mistakes every day and I'm like, it's great. Cause it means that I'm growing. It mm -hmm. means that they're growing. It means that everyone's moving forward and getting better. Um, I always kind of apply it. There's to a friend of mine. We went, we go skiing together. And he gets to the end of the day and he goes, had an amazing day. I didn't fall over once. And I'm like, to me, that's not a sign of a good day. To me, that's a sign that you haven't pushed yourself. You haven't challenged yourself because I've fallen over like a hundred times doing stupid stuff that I probably shouldn't be doing, but I'm growing. I'm getting better as a skier. Yeah. Does that make sense, Emma? Sure, for sure. And I love skiing, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first time I went, actually, I had only been to a dry slope in Ireland. So I hadn't actually skied. I told them I could ski. 
<laughs> and just and went I, for it. And I think I fell like 200 times. As well. <laughs> and the guy, the instructor said to me, are you sure you skied before? I was like, yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Um, and, but what I want, the reason that I'm kind of sharing this information with you guys today is because you can remove a lot of the errors that I made if you go and implement these things today um, and just go and start them. So after doing this for several years, what I can now do and what you will be able to do is know how to sell products and services for the customer's real benefit. But not only that, for the benefit of the business too. I think people, especially coaches, they are rubbish at selling. We all, we all were. We'd go, yeah, I'll give you three sessions or I'll buy 10 sessions. I'll give you one free. Mm -hmm. Well, those 10 sessions get used over the next 12 months. No one gets fit in 12 sessions used over 12 months. It doesn't happen. Right. So, and at that point the customer goes, well, I haven't had results working with you, so I'm not going to sign back up again. And I'm like, you didn't do anything I told you to do. <laughs> so it kind of, what the product and the process that people are selling doesn't match the result that the client needs and therefore the client isn't happy. Um, doesn't matter how expensive it is, the value of it is low because they didn't get results. Mm -hmm. And that's important and it's a really good distinction because there's plenty of people, you know, they do, like obviously I'm doing marketing and you know, people sign up and if they don't do the work, it's, you know, you have to be really looking at the outcomes that people want to achieve um, and help to deliver that. 100%. And, and, and it doesn't matter, like when people say, yeah, but no one will pay for that. They absolutely will. But you've got to have a process and, a, and like making sure that they can, they, you give them the opportunity to buy it. One of the other things uh, you can, you'll be able to, and, and after doing this, as I said, for years, I know how to sell high ticket products. And I mean, high ticket products um, and services without feeling like a used car salesman. And I think that's what everyone feels. Like. I feel like I'm trying to push a product on someone that they don't want. Like, yeah. And that's never the case, like, or very, very rarely the case. Uh, how to grow a business with recurring revenue coming in every month so you don't have to continually net chase the next sale. Like, and that I know, like, I speak to the guy who cuts my hair and he's like, yeah, I'm just, yeah, you just never know what's coming in next month. I'm like, how do you not know what's coming? Like, you book me in next month ahead of time. He's like, no, you book you in. He's like, not everybody does that. He goes, a lot of people just wait around for the call. I'm like, that's like the ter most terrifying way to do business ever. Like, that's not okay. Um, so kind of looking at how to, do, how to build recurring revenue within your business. And as I said, you can plug this into any business. Like I'm talking to coaches, but you should be looking at this. Even like I've had a coffee shop implement some of these systems in terms of like a, a coffee club and things like that. Like they, you can create recurring revenue in, in literally any business. You've just got to work out how. So I discovered this the hard way. As I said, you guys get to do this the easy way just by listening and tuning into this today and all of the other lessons that you get to go through uh, with Emma. So the hard way was as follows. Go to networking meetings with people who have no idea how to do business. <laughs> Just, I don't know if you've ever done that, Emma, but I've spent way too much time in rooms going, what, why, why am I act and, and being like, boom, I've got this, I can do this. And not knowing, to begin with, not knowing how to network and not knowing how to market, it, you know, it was on me as well. It was my, it was my issue. I spent hours and hours and hours giving away quote unquote free trials with no system of selling. And you'll hear me say this word system the, a lot because the reason I say system is because the only way that I've been able to step out of the studio is because we systemized everything. Mm -hmm. Like I have, I had an apprentice come and start working for me and she could start doing sales three days into working because there's a system that she follows. Once she's learned the system, it's done. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I, you know, it's music to my ears. I can tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have spent Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds on Google AdWords, Facebook advertising, local magazines, networking, like all loads of these things. And all before I had a sales system. That makes me cry right now. Looking at the amount of money that I've literally poured down the drain really hurts. Um, but hey, it was all a quote unquote learning experience, right? I know there's people out there going, yeah, I invested a thousand pound in my local magazine and didn't see one person come in. Mm -hmm. That's where people get a bad taste in the mouth about marketing. For sure. I'm trying to sell my services to anyone and everyone. That's a lot of time I'll never get back as well for everyone who's thinking I'm going to just try and sell to everyone. It doesn't work. As I said, it makes me feel a little bit sick, Emma. So uh, we're, we're going to forget about that, that the, hard, the hard stuff. And we're going to go in the easy way without wasting time and money. And really, this is kind of 
again, it's systems, it's processes, it's just having a replicatable system that you just go, you know, I can go do this, I can go make this happen. So I'm going to share three secrets today, Emma. Uh, the first secret is you can double your business without doubling your client base and having the stress that comes with looking after more people. Like when I speak to business owners or coaches or PTs and they're like, yeah, I've got 20 clients. I want to earn double. And they're like, but the only way I can do that is if I get 40 clients. And I'm like, can, can you look after 40 clients on your own? They're like, no. I'm like, great. Well, that's not a good plan then. <laughs> let's, not do it that way. Uh, let's not go for that focus. Uh, secret number two that I'm going to share is how you can get your ideal client chasing you instead of always chasing the next client. And for me as a PT, working in a gym, it was always running around. I was, it's, like it's embarrassing. I see people doing it now when I go and look in the gym, I'm always kind of keeping an eye open for what people are doing. And it's like, it's coming up to everyone and everyone being like, Hey, do you want personal training? No one freaking wants personal training. <laughs> I'm telling you that now they want the result that personal yes. gets, right. Um, and so there's, we're going to go into a little bit on that secret three. I'm going to show you, this is the one that like, this is one that truly, truly changed my business. Um, how I went from an average set of 90 pounds to 2040 and my biggest sale being 14,400. And if it makes it even better, for me it does, maybe not for everyone listening, but that 14,400 pound sale wasn't even made by me, it was made by my 19 year old apprentice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and, and, but that, like, again, I say that because once you have the system, once you have like the process sorted, literally anyone can do it. Like it's not, uh, it's not rocket science. It's just making sure that you've got the right processes in place. So let's dive into, oh, and also if we have time, Emma, um, you might cut me off, but if we have time, we have the bonus. I'm going to show you why you don't need to spend thousands now in advertising to make that happen. So secret number one, doubling your business without doubling your client base. I'm just going to go through, by the way, Emma, I suck at maths. Um, I remember sitting at university in my first year in sports science and we had to do like um biomechanics it was and they basically which is just the mechanics of what like the human body how stuff moves etc and the tutor sat there or the lecturer sat there and he went don't worry if you've done a level maths and got like an a or a b you'll be absolutely fine and i looked around and went i got a d at like intermediate gcse level maths i'm like i feel like i'm not going to be okay here um, so I, maths is not my forte. However, now diving into business, when I now have an application for it, it all kind of makes sense and I get excited by numbers. So just what I want to do is share some numbers with you. So there are three core ways to grow your business, any business. Number one, increase the number of customers. Number two, increase the average transaction size. And number three, increase the frequency of repurchase. And really everything that I talk about will come into one of these three things. Um, we, I might not use those phrases, but they're coming into one of those. If we're marketing, we're looking at increasing the number of customers. We might be looking at increasing the frequency of repurchase. If it's sales, we might be looking at increasing the average transaction size. Like there's all kinds of stuff that we're going into, but ultimately if you affect these three things, this is how you grow your business. So let me just show you how. So number of customers, let's say you're a personal trainer. You've got 40 trainers. And again, I'm saying personal trainer, you hear if you're a hairdresser, you hear clients, if you're in a beauty therapist, whatever. So you've got 40 customers, they pay you 30 pounds every time they see you and they come once a month, right? Um, let's say we increase, oh, that will give you 1,200 pound a month, right? So if we've got that 40 people, you see once a month, they pay 30 pounds, you've got revenue of 1,200 pounds a month. Not bad. Chris, I want to double my business. Great. Now I'm going to show you that we don't actually have to increase by that much. If we just go... Uh, I can't remember what I increased this by. It was like 15%, maybe 20, maybe 20%, 20 something like that. I can't, I'll get the actual figures. I can't remember what it was. But let's say we increased to 50 customers. So only 10 more customers. We increased by £7.50. So we got to £37.50 of our average transaction size. And they come back. Yeah, so 25%. Here you go. So they've come, we've increased each by 25%, Emma. So we've got number of customers up to 50. So you've added 10 customers. You've got average transaction size up to 37.50. Your average frequency of repurchase is now 1.25 times a month. So that means of every four people, one of them comes back an extra time that month for, for something, uh, whatever that is. You've now gone up to 2,343 and you've only added 10 clients. You've almost, and I say almost doubled your business and all you've done is added 10 clients. Like suddenly people go, oh, okay, how do I affect these other two numbers? How do I affect the average transaction size? How do I affect the frequency of repurchase? Now I said double, so let's have a look at doubling. 
So if we go still 50, but we change the average transaction size to 40 pounds, so adding two pound 50, uh, if anyone out there thinks that they're not worth an extra £2.50, they're almost certainly wrong. Uh, everyone can figure out how to add £2.50's worth of value to what they do. And so keeping it at one pound, 1.25 times a month, you have now more than doubled your monthly revenue, 2500 and you only increased each by 25%. That, to me, is where I get excited. Because I go, sweet, I don't need to look after 500 clients. I don't need to charge the world. I don't need to have people coming back day after day after day and I can still make a really good income and just affect one, two or three of those three variables. Does that make sense, Emma? Totally, absolutely. And it's great to see um, because like you're saying, an extra two pounds or an extra couple of pounds, some extra customers. Um, like a quick one to add to it as well is I was working in a hotel a couple of years ago and they wanted to add an extra 300,000 to their bottom line and they were had a meeting with all the staff and ideas and da da da. And the idea they ended up going with was they had lollipops at the reception for one euro. And, but they had a footfall of, because it was quite a big hotel and whatnot, so they made the 300,000 basically on the foot, based on the footfall because it was only one pound and it was based on you know, point of sale, so at the counter, so people, the kids or even yourself, you know, da, 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 and they made just on that. And before that, they were thinking of convoluted, we need to advertise on here and we need to do this. And then somebody just said lollipops. They're, yeah. they're like, you know, and they cost them part of nothing. And da, da, da. so it's, it's sometimes the simple ways of, of looking at these things. You know? I, I like couldn't agree more. That, that story gets me excited as well. That's, uh, that's amazing because, I mean, again, you've got PTs, like beauty therapists. I've seen people going in for like, um, I don't know, having their nails done, right? And they have their nails done in a particular color. They love, freaking love the color. And they walk out, never to come back. And I'm like, did they like the color? They're like, yeah. I'm like, did you sell them the color of the nail varnish? They're like, no. I'm like, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, if someone's like excited about achieving a goal or getting a result, give them every opportunity to get the things that are going to help them get there. Um, you know, in the PT world, it could be supplements or protein shakes like we, we sell a ludicrous number of protein shakes, protein bars and things like that with only like, a, we're not a huge giant gym, like, but it's just people come in they go, oh yeah, I need to get some more protein shake, grab, go. I'm like, that's an extra 30, 40 quid, like an extra, whatever it is for each client. It's, it's a no brainer. I think, yeah. And I think what, what it is really, it's what's, what's the next thing that your customer needs? So like, like the example where they got the nails, what's the next thing they need? So they are coming to fitness gym. So now they need energy bars. So it's always been able to facilitate um, the next thing that they need. There's some guys actually in the States, I don't know if you've heard the story and uh, they were selling guns. Um, it's a really good uh, case study. Um, and like, one of them was two brothers. One of them was really good, you know, in the store and da uh, uh, and then his other brother was a bit of a geek and he was selling online and uh, and basically he figured out that they needed oil, you know, oil for the um, guns and whatever. And then he also got a case. So first of all, he started selling oil and then actually started making the oil free. So they bought one, but what he was doing was doubling it. So it was a cost, you know, so he could add in. Anyway, it's a whole thing. But he also, what he did was he went down to the local hardware store and he got a case that so he could put in the gun, the cleaning fluid and say the couple of things that you would need just in the case and I think the, it went down to Walmart or whatever I think the case cost him $18 but he put it up in his side for 70 but the thing was when what they did was then was they had the gun so you went to buy the gun or whatever the case was and then you of course then they offered them the oil and of course the person was like oh yeah I totally need oil and then the case and then they're like oh yeah I totally need the case so by the end of the transaction they had bought three things instead of one and yes they're because there was the next thing it was the logical next step and um, that's kind of an interesting one you don't think of guns necessarily but, um, but it adds so much value to their buying experience and so they're like they do need the oil they do need the case yeah yeah and actually they had a really good thing that they did as well which i thought was really smart was um they figured out because people were coming online and they were searching they were kind of losing people they felt you know on on the website so um, particularly with kind of dealing with guns, they needed to talk to somebody and to chat to somebody. So they decided to put up a picture of a girl in the office and um, they put a picture up and they said, hey, talk to Chloe, call whatever. 
And they actually did this and weren't, hadn't quite prepared because they didn't have a Chloe in the office. <laughs> and apparently all these guys were ringing in saying they wanted to talk to Chloe and they were like, no, you can talk to Jack or whatever. And they were like, no, I'll call back on Thursday when Chloe's back. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to get a girl in the office, but they said what it, what, it was really funny, you know, because they were going to the, you know, this pop-up with, as they were leaving the website, the pop-up was, do you want to talk to Chloe? And she was obviously kind of a hot girl and um, not overly so, but um, it was just really funny. But I suppose the, the point being that it was personable in that we yeah. talked to Chloe, so it could be obviously talk to Jack, talk to Mary, talk to whoever. 100%. And they put the phone number and they could ring. And then obviously when they ring, they talk into the steps. And there was always this upsell. There was always this, this thought of why are they leaving the website? Do they now need to talk to somebody? Is that actually what they need? So yeah, so it, like this stuff is really interesting. And a lot of it just comes down to human behavior as well, isn't it? Yeah, and I think look, people freak out. Like when, when I've suggested, you know, you know, do they need a protein shake? And most of the time they're recommending these people go and get a protein shake from the store down yes. the road. Yeah. Like, yeah, they do need a protein shake, but they don't want to sell it because they don't want to feel too salesy. Yeah. I'm like, you're giving them extra value. You're helping them achieve their goal. You're telling them to go and get it anyway. They want to get it from you. You just haven't given them the opportunity. Correct. And plus they might go and get it. So if that was me, I'd be like, with the best intentions, I must get a protein, Jake. I must yeah. get a protein bar. And then I walk out the door and I'm like, oh, I'm in a hurry. And I don't. Whereas if it's there, I get it. Yeah. Or I might get distracted by Starbucks. I mean, I'm just being honest. Right. Let's go. Or McDonald's. Never McDonald's. Never McDonald's. I can't go there. Uh, but yeah, so the, 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 I'll just dive back into this. So this was me just showing you guys that it doesn't just have to be more clients, more clients, more clients. And that's what people always go to. Um, you know, I just need more clients. No, you actually probably just need to get your sales system sorted first, then dive in and get as many clients as you want. Um, so let's go into like secret number two, how you can get your ideal client chasing you instead of you always chasing the next client. Because I, I know in business, it's soul destroying chasing people and being like when, and then when someone says, or like I want to work with you and you're like, mm, I'm not sure they're the right fit for me. And you go, but I really need the money or I really need like that client 100% is going to be your worst freaking nightmare. Always never ever worth the, whatever investment they pay. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's not like if it pulls you away, drains you, whatever, not worth having. But when you're in that situation of scarcity and you just, I don't know where the next client is coming from. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, so what I want to do is show you, how you can get your ideal client chasing you. And this comes down to, Emma, we spoke about this on the podcast interview uh, last week with you and you were diving into this in such amazing detail. And I was like, like honestly, I've gone back and right. I've got to change how I like teach this because there's some stuff that we need to add in. Um, but this is kind of just the basic level uh, of what people should know about their clients. I just want to share this with you because Emma, you talk about, like being able to like literally mind read your clients, know their values, know what's important to them, know why they want to do everything that they're, you know, they're coming to you for and know, know their upbringing, know their social class. You were talking about all this kind of things, like what's their buying behavior, like know it yet. Yeah, like consumer, like buying behavior was phenomenal. And so I haven't gone into that much detail here, but this stuff that I'm going to cover here is so important. So I use this as my worksheet. Um, and maybe we can work out if I, I can give people this to download. Emma, if I send this across to you, sure. can you like link it up? Sure. Um, this is just what I do. So whenever I'm working with a, with a business, I'll be diving into the, like, before we go anywhere, I'm like, tell me who your ideal client is. We give them a name, we give them a picture. Um, I want to know who they are. And if anyone's sat there going, yeah, Chris, I'm a fitness person. I'm a fitness trainer. I work with everyone and anyone you don't, um, There'll be people that you hate working with. There'll be, people, there'll be people that you love working with. And there'll be people that you just like, you know, are going to be the most profitable as well for you. And I think knowing who those people are, who your ideal client is, is so key. And for me, it really is knowing them better than they know themselves. So like, we're going to go into who are they? Like gender, age, marital status, number of children, where they live, where they work, occupation, income, house value, household income. Like I want to know everything about them. Um, and the reason for that is the, the way that we go through all of this is once you finish this worksheet, you now know exactly where your target market is, what their problems and goals are, as you can see over here on the right hand side, uh, where their attention is and how they're consuming media, how they're consuming it. Because for example, if we go, right, what are their goals and problems? Let's say we've got 
Julie. She's uh, 49. She's approaching 50. She's married. She's got two kids, but both the kids are now just about, they've just left the house. They've gone off to university or whatever. Um, they live within five miles of you. Uh, she's a manager or some kind of director, director role, maybe high income, high house value, high household value. Her goals are she's terrified of turning 50, um, not because of the actual number, but because she's feeling old right now. She's aching. She doesn't move very well. Um, she just can't move up the stairs. She's got a bit of extra weight that she wants to lose. And she just doesn't feel very confident. She's in that director role, but she's like, she doesn't feel like a director. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, totally. So we've got these kind of pain points and these goals, and we go into more detail with those. Um, and let's say, where is her attention? She's, she's been taking her kids to like after school activities for the last like 10 years or whatever it is, but now she doesn't have to. So now she's getting more time in the evenings with her, her friends. They're going out to dinner. They're going out to meals. They're going out for coffees. Um, whatever it is find out where they are and what they're doing she consumes media she reads the paper on the train or she, maybe she reads the paper but it's the ipad version or whatever it is who is she also engaging with which other um businesses like for me as a personal trainer some of my best referrers are hairdressers because i know anyone who's willing to go and spend 120 150 pound a month on their hair making them look good feel good every month they're willing to spend money on themselves and they're willing to spend money on helping them feel better. I'm like, they're my ideal clients. Mm -hmm. Now, if a hairdresser is sat there saying, so they say they see eight people a day and I'm like, how many of those eight people tell you that they wish that they were healthier or fitter? And they're like, all of them. I'm like, great. When they do that, can you tell them to come and see me <laughs> because I am here for them. And um, the amount of people that you get through that is just, it's a, it's an easy relationship to build with that hairdresser. But, Again, if I hadn't done this, I wouldn't know where my ideal client was mm -hmm. and I wouldn't know how to turn up in front of them. Does that make sense? Totally. And I think the, one of the other ones, people always laugh. They're like, okay, so just how ninja are you about this? And I'm like, look, in where our studio is, there's a private school about two miles down the road. I know every Thursday morning, all the mums from that private school go and have coffee in our local coffee shop. I am going to be in that coffee shop on some level, in some form, whether it's posters whether it's being having a good relationship with the staff there so that if they overhear something that i might go and see chris like i'm going to be there somehow does that make sense absolutely and i love the way you're preempting the way people think so are getting into the idea that if somebody's willing to spend money on their hair like quite a lot of money they're they're into their um what they look like whatever so probably the same with makeup or a variety yeah. of other kind of things like that so and equally where people you know if it's a high level school or like as an expensive school um, you know, there's a particular type of person, like it can be sweeping generalization, but probably a high proportion of that of population of parents within that school are high achievers or, you know, da, 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 and they want to be the best they can be at probably everything in their life and fitness being one of them. So it's, the, it's the logical next step where they, they want to turn up looking like the yummy mommy, let's face it. You walk up in the SUV, you know, leather seats. Range Rover's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you got to look good. You can't just pop out in your pajamas, you know. Yep. So, um, and if you are popping out, you, you, you need to fit a fit. You know, that's that's the ideal, isn't it? So, um, 100%. yeah, so, and Chris can provide it. So I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, there's so, it, there's so many different avenues in this. And it's things like the local football and rugby clubs. Like, you have got a captive audience there. Like, if you're, you know, the, that your demographic are there watching their kid train three times a week to play once a week and they're bored as hell really I mean really watching their kid play football or rugby and they're in the clubhouse and they're having their hot chocolate and you know that there's 20 of them there every weekend like guess where I'm gonna be like if they're my ideal client and um, on some level or not whether it's at the awards evening whether it like I'm going to be in that community does that make sense oh I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even, even like, you know, I was talking to a client there last week and she's a photographer, a high-end photographer. So she charges quite a lot of money to um, take pictures of um, little babies and stuff. So I was like, you got to get into the, some of the boutiques, you know, you, where they're buying, um, you know, these type of things, you know, where they're buying clothes, they're prepared to pay a lot of money. Like, say, clothes and whatever. And she's already done that, but we've also mapped out for the year. There's different events, high-level events, we'd say, in her community. Like she's based in Canada. So it's, you know, 
what goals are going on, what charity events are going on, like what your aims, can you can you have an exhibition there? Can you um, give something to them? So how can you put yourself there because you're in the money where you're in the room with people that want to spend money and have the disposable income to do so and are prepared to pay thousands yeah. to have their babies photographed. So that's the type of person you need to be rubbing shoulders with. And the question is, how can you get in with them and how can you showcase what you do? You know, so and I and I love those ideas that you have about the coffee shop and the hairdresser. I mean, they're just great. I, and I mean, they're just like they're like I find because uh, I know that that's where our target market is. But there's again someone like for the photographer. That's a, if you can get photographing their baby, photographing is that a word? I don't know. Their yeah. baby photographing. <laughs> there you go. If you can do that for their baby, like you, then get them for perhaps the second baby. You then get them at right. top with the family shot. You then get them at going the first day of school type. You've got the whole like sequence of events just because you got that first in, that first introduction. It's yeah. huge. Yeah, it is. And the thing is, you know, it, it's got to have a label, you know, it's got to have the brand as in, you know, when other people see it, like, oh, you got Chris White to do your personal training. Oh, you got, you know, so there's that kind of level of brand. Um, like I have another client and they do really high level photography in, um, in the UK, but like they're literally target marketing billionaires. Nice. And it's, but it's an interesting one because it's like, where do they hang out? You know, um, and the interesting thing is interior designers, you know, so talking to them, um, so we have a range of things that they need to do and are doing and, you know, where they're talking about clients and equally when they come to buy, because of course, you know, there's all, you know, they take all these photographs and all the rest of it when they come to buy. So even that whole buying experience and how, how do you, you know, is it a masterpiece? Like, how do you position it? So there's all, the, I, and again, I'm just saying this in the context of, you know, everybody's business is slightly different and you're like, some target markets are hard to get to. So you've got to kind of think in a roundabout way. Like Chris is doing, like going into the hairdressers, going into like that's smart. I mean, I love that. Um, going into the cock shop, being there, like in whatever context. Even if you go to kind of even like your local bank or the credit unions, like you can have some of the videos going. Um, again, if it's in a particular area, it, you know. So it's it's just really thinking outside the box, isn't it? Really. A hundred percent. And and again, it doesn't even have to be in like I don't want to just get people putting posters up everywhere. Because by the way, when someone brings me like a hundred flyers who I've never met before. And they're like, hey, can you put these out to all your clients? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, they go straight in the bin. So what I'm saying is go and build, if it's a business, go and build a relationship with the business owner. Go and build a relationship with the hairdresser. If it's the, that coffee shop, for example, basically what we do is we go and put on events and they promote the events at the point to everyone that comes in. So it's not that I'm there every Thursday, as it were, but we go, right, this month we're going to do a joint event with them and they promote the event to everyone that comes in. So there's, so it's 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 kind of it's a relationship game when you're building relationships with other business owners um it's not necessarily just throw a flyer at them uh, yeah. but the other reason i've put like where is their attention down here uh, and whether like digital or print let's do digital or print first if someone if all the media that they consume is digital putting something in print they're not going to look at it right mm -hmm. if something is if they don't ever look at an ipad they don't even know what an ipad is like giving them something on an ipad it's not going to happen. Like they're not even going to see it. Like it could be the best ad in the world, but if they're not going to see it, it's irrelevant. Um, and I'm working with an estate agent at the moment and uh, I won't name names because they'll, they'll probably hate me for this, but they, and it's a local estate agent and they invest something like, it's like 40 grand a year in newspaper advertising. Right. And you'll see a lot of estate agents still doing this. And I'm like, okay, how many leads did you get from the newspaper advertising? And one of the ladies in the room, one of the directors, she burst out laughing and she was like, in the last year? I was like, sure. She was like, zero. Oh my like, gosh. I'm like, and I was like, why do you think that is? And she was like, oh, target market, don't read the freaking newspaper. I'm like, I agree with you. Like there is no one buying these houses out of it. They're not looking at the local ad advertising newspaper. Um, she, I was like, where do they come from? She was like, they all come online. I'm like, I'm like, so and my question is, why are you spending 40 grand a year on newspaper advertising? if it's not generating any leads and the response is uh, it's mainly for just so that people know that we still exist brand awareness. I'm like, that's a waste of 40 grand. I'm like, remove, <laughs> remove that immediately. Put that into other avenues that you know, your target market are looking at. For sure. And that's kind of where I kind of dive into all of this stuff in terms of influencers. If they're already like in the fitness world, let's say someone everyone knows is Jillian Michaels, right from the biggest loser or yeah. something like that. If, if you know your target market already, they already are excited about fitness. Like they, they just need a bit of extra help. For example, they may already know Jillian Michaels. 
Mm-hmm. Or for example, our clients, loads of them come in and say, oh, I've watched that program a year to save my life. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So if you know that information, when you go onto things like Facebook and you're running Facebook ads, you can literally target women who are 45 to 50 who live within five miles of my radius who like the program A Year to Save My Life and Gillian Michaels. And now you know, right, that is my ideal client right there. They are seeing my content. Totally. Um, and the other thing is obviously retargeting, like in terms of getting the people that have come to your website mm. and go away, which is you know, a lot of people, um, 90%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, too many. <laughs> yeah, so it's a case of how do you capture them again? And I, I love retargeting, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's awesome. So yeah, so I, yeah, this is great stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So what I'll do is I'll send this across to you, Emma, and you can put this as a link or somewhere for someone for people can Perfect. download it and play around with that. That's fine. Um, yeah. So that's kind of this is number two. And when you know this stuff, when you know their pain points, when you know their goals, like they're going to be attracted to you. And when you're putting content out there, you're not now putting content out there saying get fit, lose weight, right? Because that's kind of generic and bland. But when you say, hey here's a story about a lady who was approaching 50. She was stressed out, tired from work. She felt like she had no energy and she managed to lose three stone in four months. And look at her now, every 49 year old woman in your area is going to be like, how do I do this? <laughs> like, how do I get there? Um, and they're going to be like, I need to work with Chris. Yeah. And it's transformation. What you're doing is showing people the outcome. You're looking, they're looking at the results. Whereas if you show them the process, I mean, most people's eyes glaze over. <laughs> Let's be honest, I will, I will give you 13 personal training sessions, which will be 55 minutes each. And what you'll get is a series. I'm like, yeah, you, you just switched off really. haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, huh? yeah, exactly. You've lost me at the first word. Yeah, <laughs> what did you say again? Absolutely. Yeah. So focus on the result and you know, the result that you get your ideal client match that with the ideal client, make sure that they see it and they'll be flocking to you. Great. Cool. So let's go into, Oh, I just wanted to add this. People buy from people that they know, like, and trust. If you're putting content out there that is relevant to that market and it's useful, valuable information, people will know you, like you, trust you. If you're building relationships with other business owners, their clients will automatically have trust in you through that business, if that makes sense. So they're automatically going to have a level of trust there just because the person they already know introduced you to them. So there's, this is what you've got to focus on building a relationship. I've said that word several times already. Um, cool. So secret number three, this is one of my favorites, how I went from an average set of 90 pounds that yes, that's selling three personal training sessions for 30 pounds winning to 2040 pounds, uh, with the biggest set of 14,400. As I said, that sale wasn't even made by me. That was made by my 19 year old apprentice. But that shows the system works. The system works. Yeah, absolutely. And it's looking at, um, the difference for me when your difference is you're making an average set of 90 pounds to 2000 pounds, that's alone is a game changer. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of like revenue and having, rec- and sometimes this would be recurring. Like people will be like, well, no one's going to pay 14,400 pounds up front. And you're right that it wasn't, it's a monthly payment over 12 months. It was a 12 month agreement, a 12 month um, contract, if that makes sense. Um, but people will like, when you say, Hey, well, we can get a 10% off if you pay up front, people pay it. Like we have people paying for six months worth of personal training in full, like two, three sessions a week done. Here's the cash done. Um, it, it works like it, it's a process that works and really all that we're looking at here is this is like as i said this always relates back to one of those things increasing the average transaction size my first question is how much do you charge um my favorite quote is are you the cheapest or the best good i like that like when and i'm like when when you see two different prices you assume the expensive one is the better one yes, absolutely. Um, and that's shown time and time and time again and, and people are always like, and, and, and charging more gives you the potential to be the best. I should add that as well. Like if you're someone who's charging 20 pound an hour for personal training, the value you can offer is nothing. When you charge 80 pounds an hour for personal training, the value you offer can be way more. And what I mean by that is if you're charging 20 pound an hour, you have to work four hours for every one hour that I have to work at 80 pounds an hour. Am I going to deliver better, a better, a just a better session to that client without a doubt? I've got more energy. I've got more time for them. I like, I'm, that's a way better session. Full stop. I've got time to plan their session. I've got time to send up their like, nutrition plans, whatever. But with that extra 60 pounds, i now can go, right. I can now give them gifts. I can now go and provide them with value adders, whether it's nutritional programs, whether it's, you know, a, 
DNA testing fitness thing or whatever it is, there is the potential for me to add so much more value that they get a better result quicker and therefore I am way better value than the person charging 20 pound an hour. Always comes down to result. If you can get them the result, like people will pay whatever. Like it's, it's not an expense, it's an investment. People value it, right? If you, you charge 20 pound an hour, here, okay, let's put it even this way. I've had people come into me and say, yeah, I've spent th- like 3,000 pounds on the gym over the last year, over the last like three years. I'm like, great. How did that work out for you? And they're like, I didn't go once. I'm like, cool. <laughs> so although the gym is you know, 70 pound a month or whatever it is, and that's way cheaper than having personal training three times a week, um, I'm like, you take that same investment, put that into us, and I guarantee you, you'll have results. Like, which one's better value? Like, the one where you get results. Spending money, spending money on a gym membership that you never use, it may be cheap, but it's not very good value if you don't get results. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, the ladies will understand this. It's like buying a really cheap dress, leaving it in the wardrobe because you won't wear it because it's <laughs> cheap or something like that. Bless you. So, you know, it's, 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 um, what's that saying whereby it's, well, basically you think you're saving, but in the long run, you're not really saving. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, yeah, yeah. I've got a good deal. Yeah, but you've never worn it. <laughs> therefore, therefore my it's... my mother, oh my god, she does this all the time. Like she just collect. Like once she bought like sixty bananas on sale, <laughs> and she said to me, "But Emma, I got them for like three euros." And I'm like, "But how on earth are you going to eat sixty bananas? Like the, the entire table yeah. is covered in sixty bananas." Like I was like, "It's not even possible." And she was like, "Totally not listening to me." He's like, "But I got sixty bananas." I'm like. Yeah. But seriously, like they're practically all gone off. Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, you, they, it's like I just saved fifty dollars or fifty yeah. pounds. No, you didn't. You just spent five. <laughs> <You're actually laughs> um, yeah. So, my first question to everyone out there is, what are you charging? Don't like, don't try and be the cheapest. If you're racing to the bottom, it's a very quick way to run yourself out of business. Um, and ask yourself, how can you serve your clients better? If you charge more, what could you offer them? What extra value could you give them? Is it for in the personal training world is it like nutritional programs if you're in like the beauty therapy world is it that they get a free i don't know nail color that they really like when they come and visit like what are those extra value adders that you could add and add huge amounts of value for actually a relatively small investment so look at your pricing and your packaging and i'm just going to give you an example here um option one like client buys one session at 60 pounds like and, and I kind of increased the price because I know how much like hairdressers and that's charged. So they're like 150 range and then you've got personal trainers charging like 20 pound or whatever. But let's say a client buys one session or one product, whatever it is, 60 pounds. That's option one. Option two, client purchases 12 months worth of sessions at once a week at 60 pounds is 3,120 pounds, right? Even if on option one, you go, yeah, but my clients come back every week. I'm like, yeah, but you've got to sell them 52 times a year. Every time you've got to book them back into a session and take payment, you are selling them. That's a selling process. That, that I'm, not, I'm not willing to invest 52 weeks worth of selling for one person for one session. Option two, I sell them 12 months worth of sessions up front. Done. Payment happens automatically. It goes out. My sale is 3,120. I can rest. And now I get to spend that time focusing on selling the next person and marketing to the next person. Does that make sense? Cool. I mean, when you, when you start, like, if we go back to that original, like, three, affecting the three different variables, if you go now from selling your average sale being 90 or 60 or whatever it was that we looked at in that, in that example to 3,120, that's a game changer. Mm-hmm. And the reason this excites me, I can't even remember if I go into this. Oh, well, I'll go into this in a second. So which one serves the client better? Option two, like I said at the beginning, when you sell one session, if it's like in the fitness world, one session is going to get no one fit. No one gets healthy and fit in one session. Over one year with a session a week, two sessions a week, whatever it is, do they get better results? You freaking bet because they're committed to it. They've made the decision to invest in their health, invest in whatever it is. And again, there's people everywhere going, I can't, I can't charge, I can't get my clients onto a recurring contract like that. I know barbers, hairdressers who have memberships. They're like, yeah, it's 50 quid a month, whatever it is. You come in, you get your hair cut, you get a shave or whatever. I know beauty therapists doing this, sports therapists, sports massage. Like, it co- as I said, the coffee shop, the coffee club, recurring membership. There is so many like different ways that every business can implement that. 
and it allows them to go, great, we can now serve our clients better because we know we've got this income. We can then go and deliver that back to the clients. You're not scrambling around as much. Or like Correct. Clients, like we're this. Oh my god! Like every week. Oh my god! Oh my god! And uh, whereas you know, so say if you've got ten clients on on the twelve, you you know that that's the income that you have. Um, for you know, so you you can relax and you, as you say, you can you can um, serve your clients a lot better because you're focusing on that rather than okay, I need to get one more sixty pounds. I need to get one more thirty pounds or whatever the case yeah. is. So it totally works. Totally. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So, and, and the reason I'll go on to the bonus one, just very, have we got time, Emma? Have we got time to go on to the bonus one? Or am I yeah, out? Yeah, no, no, we'll just go quick. We can go quickly because we're running a little bit of out of time. So. Okay, fine. I'll go super quick. So basically the reason I like this is because as we said, um, now a lot of the reason that I guess people who are charging that one-off fee, like if you'll just say, right, my av- when I was doing it, my average ticket was say 90 pounds. Mm-hmm. I'm like, marketing scared the crap out of me because I'm like, if I spend a thousand pounds and only make one sale, I, I've lost 910 pounds, right? Now, if I make a sale with my average sale of 2000 pounds, if I now spend a thousand pounds on marketing, but I make one sale, I make two grand. I've made a profit. Same marketing investment, same one sale, totally wildly different outcome. Okay. That makes sense. Absolutely. I know it's great. As I said, all of this is music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So uh, you don't need to spend thousands of advertising to make this happen. I'm just going to give you a quick example real quick. I'll fly through it. So before invested marketing, like gets three customers buying once 30 pounds, same investments gets three customers buying once 2000 pounds. That's six grand versus 90 pounds or whatever it is like totally different outcome, like same person, same ideal client, totally different outcome. So the journey, this is what most people will do or something along these lines. They'll build some kind of quote unquote funnel. They go, right, let's say Facebook ad to the client and we go consultation, phone call, and they filled in a web form, right? So they saw your ad, they filled in a web form, they got the phone call, they got the consultation equals a client, right? Now, when you're doing marketing, knowing that you go, right, this person at the end is 2000 pounds, you can invest more into marketing as long as you've got that process going along because you know it becomes a Right, well, for every 100 pounds I spend, I make two grand. Mm-hmm. Well, Emma, if I said to you, you give me 100 pounds, I'll give you 2,000 pounds back, what would you do? I mean, you'd be happy, wouldn't you? You'd be, I'd, I'd be like, Emma, take my freaking money. Like, give me, there's another 100 pounds. Go, 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 go. It's a machine. <laughs> like, you give me 100 pounds, I'll give you two grand. Like, keep going. And really, at the moment, most coaches, although they understand that there is this process in there, they just don't implement it. And there's not a replicatable um, process that they put in there to go, here's how they find out about me. Here's where they pay me. Here's where they become a, like a raving fan, if that makes sense. Totally. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it from me, Emma. I've put a slide on the back here how people can get, get yeah. to me. Yeah, okay it shows. It shows. Absolutely. Um, so um, where people can find me, um, and I think, Emma, you're going to share these things anyway, but if at the moment go head on over to level10living.co.uk. There's a blog, there's the podcast, which is the Entrepreneur Playbook podcast. Um, basically, we just dive into all things business, like anything that's going to help a business owner or an entrepreneur take their business to the next level. We even dive into things like health, relationships, because that is key for all entrepreneurs. We know that we put our businesses first way too often and uh, not focusing on other stuff. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all forward slash your level 10 life and Snapchat is level 10 living. That's where you can find me. And come, and find me. come and connect with me. Come and say hi. <laughs> I love this guy. Brilliant. I mean, look, level10living.co.uk, guys. Um, you can get um, Chris on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, your forward slash your level 10 life, Snapchat, level 10 living. And again, he's an awesome podcast, as you can see, guys, the Entrepreneur Play, uh, Playbook podcast. So really worth um, listening in. I, you know, he's got some stellar guests on there. And of course, I'd say that when one, but no, in, like you genuinely. <laughs> yeah. One last week was outstanding. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, but it's great. And look, what I say to you is that congratulations. Like you have a sterling business there. Um, and I think it's great what you're doing. Um, and I'm hoping people will contact you in particular, obviously, if they're in the fitness industry. But as you write to say, look, this stuff applies to everybody. It's not just because you're a fitness um, company. It is you, as coffee shops, you know, all the rest of it, hairdressers, you know, no matter what business you have, you can apply it to it. It's a case of not having like take the take the traditional filters off, be open, listen, learn, know your customers, 
go through some of the steps here, like Chris outlines, and you can put in your sales funnel, whatever you want to call it. But the basic thing is you have processes and you know what you're doing um, and you're looking to create outcomes, like as in results for your customers, not I'm going to sell you a shoe with laces that's colored X and Y and yeah. it comes in a box and I mean, you're like, oh my gosh, like, I don't want that shoe. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, so it's, it's, it's really, really, really about looking at results for people. So Chris, thank you so much. That's been a starting performance. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you for having me, Emma. And like, and I know I kind of raced through the end there, but have you got any questions that you would like to ask me or anything like that? I think going through it, we kind of had a chat and everything. So I think you've kind of covered um, much of um, kind of what you need to do and stuff. So I think we're okay in that. Um, I think people need to probably go back through it. I would say and they can look back in the recording because there's a lot in there. So I think it's kind of a case of going back and kind of systemizing it. So it is a case of going back. What I'd say to people is, look guys, it's action. So just listening to Chris, listening to any of the speakers for the 10 days, it's not enough. You've got to put this stuff into action. Like 100%. Chris is saying, you can spend the year, you can spend 10 years, like you could spend 20 years in business barely making it because you're not putting the system in place. But once you start really being aware of what you're doing, really being aware of, I mean, to say you're making, what was it, 163 an hour, or, you know, whatever the case is, you know, it's like, holy <gasps> crap. It hurts. <laughs> yeah, it does. And look, because the thing about it is the idea of being an entrepreneur sounds fabulous sometimes, you know, and um, sometimes people say to me, well, that's great. You can go and collect your daughter and different things like that. And I mean, that is good. But at the same time, you still have to put the work in, yeah. you know, so it's not all um, fabulous. And if you don't have a system, it certainly isn't fabulous. <laughs> um, so, you know, Chris has a great lifestyle. He's got a nice work-life balance and he has a because of systems in place. And I also like to see where over the case, over the space of three years, you know, you've grown, so you, you start that basis, you start that foundation, you start that platform and you build and you build and you build. And then you're actually worth it a million times a year just for coaching, as he says, that doesn't even count. And the upsells, the cross sells um, into coaching bars and whatnot as well. The guys always be thinking of the next, you know, what's the next thing the person says or needs. It's not the next sale, it's what the person needs and then you can sell it. Hundred percent. And can I just add one final? Just sure, kind of absolutely. So that for me, I can't stress enough that your business is there to support your lifestyle. And really, when you just go right, here's here's what I want, and that's where I would always start. What do you want? What does your ideal life look like? And then go. What does? And then design the business based off that. What does the business need to look like to make that happen? And when you then go, okay change my average sale from 90 pounds to 2000 pounds suddenly that ideal lifestyle whatever it is becomes way more like like realistic i guess people go that that's totally unrealistic and actually well when you change from 90 pounds to 2000 pounds your average sale suddenly you go actually i only need four clients five clients whatever it is instead of the 30 clients that i thought i was going to need yeah you can take yourself out of hospital basically yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> hundred um, percent. So I would just say, start with the end in mind, go and focus on what you want to achieve and then create the business and make that happen. Great. Brilliant. Chris. Look at, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to do a fantastic thank presentation. Not at all. It's been great. So I hope we can maybe do some more stuff in the future. So thank you so much. hundred percent. Thank you.